Hello, in this lecture, we're going to talk about the idea of tracking inventory and recording inventory, both in terms of the balance sheet as well as the income statement in the format of cost of goods sold. In our example, we're going to be purchasing and selling forklifts, meaning we're going to purchase forklifts from the factory and then we're going to sell those forklifts. That means that forklifts to us will be inventory. They're inventory because we are purchasing the forklifts in order to resell them for the generation of revenue. That's really going to be the definition of inventory, the purchasing of something for the resale of it, as opposed to if we were someone else purchasing the forklift in order to help us generate revenue in another way through the use of the forklift, in which case it would then be property, plant, and equipment. So it's the intended use of the forklift, which will determine whether or not it will be an asset in the form of inventory or an asset in the form uh, format of property, plant, and equipment. The first question we have here is how are we going to record this forklift on the balance sheet? How are we going to put it on the balance sheet? Will we put it on the balance sheet as one forklift? And obviously we can't do that. We're not going to put it on the balance sheet as one forklift. It seems obvious, but we have to put it on the balance sheet in terms of dollars. In this case, we're going to say we purchased the forklift for $15,000. Therefore, we're going to put it on the books at $15,000. This is similar to any other type of conversion. If we're converting from one type of currency to another type of currency, if we're converting from inches to feet any units of length then we have to do that same type of conversion we're converging here in terms of units to dollars that kind of conversion can cause us problems and that's those are the problems we'll deal with as we go through some of these uh, inventory tracking the reason we know it's fifteen thousand at this point in time is because we purchased it for fifteen thousand on a free market we could have purchased it with cash or we could have purchased it with some combination of cash or something like credit but the purchase price on a free market gives us that fifteen thousand dollar amount that's seventy four thousand two hundred of inventory reported on the balance sheet in terms of dollars backed up in some way by these five forklifts now the problem happens when we actually sell the forklift. Let's say we're going to sell this one particular forklift to the customer. We know what the sales price can be because we're going to come up with the sales price and that's not a problem. The real problem is going to be the cost. What, what is the cost of that? How much of this 74,200 do we need to reduce it by when we sell that one forklift? And we might say, well, why don't we just take the five forklifts and say it's the total was 74,200 and divide it by five and say that one forklift is worth 14840 That is one way we can do it. That's a form of, of averaging the method, but we might do it a different way in this particular case. We might take this 74200 assign identification numbers and say this is ID number one, ID number two, and so forth. That will allow us then to assign specific dollar amounts, meaning that number one costs us 15000 number two costs us 14006 number three costs us 14400 meaning we're going to specifically identify, specifically track this information and track it by the actual cost of that individual item. That's going to be called specific identification. If we do that method, then we could say, okay, that particular forklift, number one, the one we sold, that one cost 15000 If we go to the journal entries, it's important to note that there's a distinction between the cost and the sales price. The sales price might be based on the cost, and so, for example, we might have the cost and have some particular markup, like a 30% markup, and that might be how we come up with the sales price. But note that the sales price is different than what we're typically doing in tracking the costs. And when we move to cost tracking, that often gets lost. So let's just say that we're going to record the sale first. The sale is the 16000 has nothing to do with the inventory cost in this particular problem. We're going to give that here. We're going to say 16000 accounts receivable. We sold it on account, and sales go up by 16000 where our tracking comes into play is when we're going to say, okay, how much does inventory go down by? It goes down by that 15000 that we sold, and the related cost of goods sold will be going up, bringing net income down. So we're going to say that inventory then is going to be reduced by that particular item for $15,000 worth of forkliftness, and the expense of cost of goods sold is going to go up by that 15000 bringing net income down. And of course, the sales on the income statement is going to go up by the 16000 so there's a net gain of the 1000 net income effect in that case. So now we're saying that that 74200 is now going to be backed up by our subsidiary ledger, backed up by ID number, backed up by specific identification, adding up the 146, the 144, the 142, the 16000 giving us the 59200 in inventory after that sales point. That 59200 then is of course what will now be on the balance sheet. Now, what we've used here is specific identification. The reason we would do that is because the forklifts are fairly large. 
Uh, we probably don't have a lot of them in comparison to other types of inventory, and they could be different in nature. They might not be exactly the same. They might have different colors and different features. If we were selling something that was completely the same, and we had a whole lot of them, things like coffee mugs or something, specifically identifying all the coffee no mugs like this might be not worth our time. Therefore, we might not want to track exactly which coffee mug we then sell. If we have small things that are going to be all the same, we might want to use some estimating method. And those estimating methods will be things like first in, first out, uh, the average method, and last in, first out, which we'll talk about next time.